Over the centuries of Canada's history, the welcoming of newcomers into our midst has become a tradition. It is the way we grow as one of the most unique societies in the world. For the individuals involved, both the newcomers and those who help them, it is also a way to grow spiritually and psychically. When I came here, uh, in the way I saw that people is here, the churches, so something uh, born in my, my heart. That's why I, I accepted Jesus as my savior and uh, I, I, I was baptized in this country. So I started a new life through the examples I saw. There are so many beautiful stories about refugees, success stories about um, who they are in society and who they are in what they have done for the community. We have the case of a woman who was actually saw her husband killed in front of her. And there was another woman, a very wealthy woman, who, who was grieving the loss of her husband. She had to get out of, of the state she was in. So she decided that she would um, volunteer one day a week at Chez Marie in St. Catharines. And she came in and she started to talk to this other refugee woman. And she said, after a few weeks, she said, never in my life did I think that a person from such a different background, so much less advantaged um, economically, completely different from myself, could become like my sister in such a short time. Because somehow the refugee woman understood her situation and vice versa, and they live something very deeply. The staying power of church people, uh, what is their deep commitment uh, to refugees in these very complicated and complex circumstances is quite a remarkable thing. Um, and it's something that I try to explore in my research. A lot of individuals talked about their personal faith, um, when they discussed exactly this question, why do you do what you do, how can you do it? One particular individual had lost a child, for example, a devastating tragedy in their lives, and it was the pain of losing their own child that allowed them to relate to a particular family where two of the children were, were murdered. A Jewish woman, for example, had lost relatives um, to the Holocaust, and she said, well, if my children were in her country looking for asylum, I would want her to do what I should do for them. So she was making that connection. I would want someone to do this for my children. Lives change in the process of welcoming the stranger. Children grow up together. Cultures, even languages, are exchanged. The definition of what it means to be a member of a family becomes a lot bigger. What might begin as a simple act of compassion, of helping someone in trouble, can turn out to last a lifetime. Isela says, I am very grateful for, with the whole uh, Georgetown committee, and uh, everybody is in her heart. For the brief time that you lived with us in our house, it was. Uh, um, it just, I guess, taught me a lot of things that people are the same and, uh, and uh, you as a mother for your children have a great love for your children and, and uh, you as a father. And, uh, and that, that love was carried over to my kids as well. They are going to learn from you what you are doing and that my kids are going to do the same in the future for another people who are going to be strangers in this country. I have seen this happen on TV, etc., but uh, people from different countries, but actually meeting someone from who didn't speak my language and I didn't speak their language, this, this, and, and to welcome them as a friend, which is basically what I had to do. I had to be able to accept um, a stranger, and this is what. Um, the gospel had always taught you to do. It also makes you realize, I think, as a Christian, perhaps how much you've been hoodwinked by the economics uh, of, of our way of living, because 
the main argument I think that's used in Canada um, about the levels of immigrants and refugees that we receive is that it'll negatively affect the, the economy. We had a, a number of families we've been involved with over the years, my husband and I, and uh, especially my husband. And uh, one of them is a Laotian family. And we've, over the years, we've known them for about 19 years now. And I was, we were at a funeral and we went back, they asked us back to the house and it was just packed from uh, floor to ceiling with, with people from the basement right up, wasn't it? And um, we sat there and we are talking about uh, different things. And, uh, and I said, yes, you are so lucky because you have, you have your mother and uh, father here and you have uh, sisters and brothers. Uh, my husband and I, we don't really have a, an extended family yeah. like you do. I said, you're so fortunate. And she says, oh, she says, you do have an extended family. She says, you have us because if you ever need any help, we will always be there for you. And that really, that really touched me. It was like a, a turning of the table, so to speak. I want to tell you something. What I feel is that like, we are a big family. We are not just a Thompson family or Berry family or Cabeza family. We are a big family in Jesus. And that we are, I think if uh, Jesus is watching us, he's going to be so pleased that what we are doing.